Good morning, men and women of Christ. Glad to be back with you with part three of this spirit-led teaching. Christ is the death, life, and living of the true Christian. Christ is the death, life, and living of the true Christian. The true Christian's life is in Christ. The true Christian has no life outside of Christ. They have the material world and they have material provision outside of Christ, which is in the flesh. The only thing outside of the life is the flesh. And the flesh has to come under the government of the life and financial and material resources under the stewardship of the life. Because we're in the life. We're in the life. Um, Romans 8.8 8 says that they that are in the flesh cannot please God. What does it mean when it says they that are in the flesh? They that are in that fallen state limited to the flesh, which is referred to in 2 Corinthians 2.14 as the natural man and woman. It didn't say carnal, it said flesh. When it says flesh, it's speaking of the natural. When it says carnal, it's those that have been born back into Christ, but they've conformed back to the flesh. They're carnal. They're carnal. Uh, they're saved, but they haven't, they're not entering into salvation. Saved is to be in Christ. Salvation is when you enter into the fruit of Christ. That's when your salvation becomes complete. That's when your salvation becomes complete. Uh, so when it says, uh, Romans 8, 8, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. Once again, it's speaking of those uh, in 2 Corinthians, not 2 Corinthians, yeah, sec, uh, 1 Corinthians 2, 14. 1 Corinthians 2, 14, um, where it says, the natural man and woman are receiving not the things of the Spirit of God, because it is foolishness unto them, neither can they know them. Uh, they're, they're in that fallen state and sin has conformed them, the, the, the mind of their spirit to the flesh. Where in that state, we can only see the flesh. We can only reason according to the flesh. We can only know according to the flesh. We can't discern between flesh and spirit because we don't even know we have a spirit. Okay? We are spiritually dead. What do the spiritually dead know? They know nothing. Let us go to part three uh, uh, of this teaching, Romans, chap uh, Romans chapter 8, 9, 10, and 11. Romans chapter 8, 9, 10, and 11. 9 says, but you are not in the flesh. Remember, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. Uh, their identity is not in the fruit of Christ where it becomes evident that they belong to Christ. They're the true Christians. Their identity uh, is in Bible-based religion and Judeo religion. Because remember, the Bible was translated from, uh, the Bible was translated from the Judeo's religion. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. So you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. It means you're not in the flesh. You're no longer in church, which is a thing of the, uh, the thing of the flesh. You're not in the letter, which was, which was given to the flesh. You're in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Well, who is the spirit of God? It goes on to tell you, if any have not the spirit of Christ, they're none of his. You see, the spirit of Christ is the spirit of God. And the life of God is what Satan seeks to alienate you from. Ephesians uh, 4.18 says uh, uh, that, let's go back to it real quick, Ephesians Ephesians 4.18 Ephesians 4.18 says um, uh, 
having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Um, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God, which is in Christ. Because um, Colossians 3, 3 tells us that your life is hid in Christ in God. And when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, so shall we also appear with him in glory. So our life is hid in Christ in God. Christ is the life of God. Without Christ, you just got God. And the Spirit of God, if, if you say the Spirit of God, then that only equates to God. But the life of God is what he seeks to alienate you from. So being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them, spiritual ignorance, because of the blindness of their heart. Well, who's blinding them in, in, in spirit? 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4. For if our gospel is hid, it is hid from those who are lost, in whom the God of this present age, you see, it didn't say life, you see the difference between God and the life of God? It said the God of this present age, that's speaking of the devil, had blinded the minds of them which believe not, least the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. You see, if all you got is God in Scripture, then you got Satan. Because he uses God and Scripture to alienate you to the life of God, which is in Christ Jesus. We have to be careful, people. We have to be careful. We have to, we, we have to ask God for Christ. You know, we have to ask God for Christ. You need the spirit of Christ. When your spirit is in the spirit of Christ, it's in the life of God. From that, from that point, the life of God is going to make its way through you. It's going to make its way through you. That's where you experience the life of God as he begins to live through you. So it is Satan with, 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 with God that blinds you to the life of God. Everybody blinded to the life of God got God. They got God, Scripture, and church, but they ain't got the life. They got God, Scripture, and church without the evidence to back it up. The evidence has to be there, and the evidence is the fruit of the Spirit, which is the revelation of the Spirit, which is the revelation of Christ. Anything outside of that, your identity is still in the world because you're still of the Spirit of the world. You go to a black church or a white church, you're still identifying as black, white, or whatever. Um, and that's where you're at. You're still in religion. That's Bible-based religion. Your flesh in church, but your spirit is not in Christ. Your spirit is still dead in sin, but through the death of Christ has not been, has not been made dead to sin. You're a sinner saved by grace. When your spirit is dead to sin, then you know grace saved you from sin. You see, the sinner saved by grace, that's the salvation of God. That's the salvation of God, which is the devil, which blinds you to the gospel. Got you thinking you saved in sin. You're not saved in sin. You saved from sin by the life of God. By the life of God. God by itself has no life. God by itself is death. Satan alienates you from the life of God. Who alienates you from the life of God? According to 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4, the God of this present age, the devil, Satan, Lucifer. 9 through 11. So it says you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If you're in Christ's spirit, look at the process. Listen to the process. 9. Okay. Uh, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of Christ dwell in you, the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any have not the spirit of Christ, they're none of his. The spirit of Christ is the life of God that Satan alienates you from. We, we've already established that. 10. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. You see? You see, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Now, when we die to sin, we die to sin, spirit, soul, and body. But only our spirit was resurrected from sin. 
because only our spirit can be uh, saved from sin. Once the spirit is saved from sin, then through transformation of the mind of your spirit, the soul will be redeemed and physical body quickened, uh, 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 quickened uh, according to the fruit uh, uh, of Christ. According to the fruit of Christ. And if Christ being you, I kind of jumped ahead of myself right there. If Christ being you, the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. The body is still dead to the fruit of sin, but the body is still acting in the form of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. 12, no, uh, 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he shall also He shall also quicken your mortal bodies, your mortal bodies, that's your physical bodies, by his spirit that dwells in you. The physical body is quickened by the fruit of the spirit to bring it back under the regeneration of the health of the spirit. Because the health and preservation of the physical body is in the fruit of the spirit. It's not in food. It's not in what we eat. It's not in exercise. The spirit created the flesh. Therefore, the spirit is the preservation of the flesh. This is where your lifetime comes from. Your lifetime is not in food because there's no life in food. Okay. Uh, the spirit created the flesh. The spirit is the preservation of the flesh. This is where your long life comes from. Your long life is eternal life through the flesh. Your long life is is not life in the flesh because your flesh can't have life. But the flesh is preserved in youth through the fruit of youth that lives through it, which is the fruit of life. Okay, We live long according to our purpose. We live long because we're living in purpose. The flesh is the, uh, the, the spirit is the preservation of the flesh because the spirit created the flesh. The spirit made the flesh. We were created men and women. We were made male and female. The spirit made the flesh. So therefore the spirit is the preservation of the flesh. All right. And that brings us to a conclusion of part three of this teaching. Okay. Everything that was made is inferior to what was created. Okay, the male was made inferior to the man, the female inferior to the woman. Uh, provision inferior to prosperity. Okay, uh, uh, this is why uh, the flesh has to come under the government of the spirit and provision, which is financial and material, has to come under the stewardship of prosperity. Of the stewardship of prosperity. And that brings us to a conclusion of part three of this teaching. Uh, be back with you in part four. Love you in Christ.